Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. This is podcast number 17, Goddess Kring Radio podcast. I've been doing this for 17 weeks. The time has flown on by. It is now February 9th, 2017, here in Seattle on this gray, 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 rainy, cold day. I drove in the snow a little bit. Recently we had snow and it was a little scary, but I did pretty well. So this is going to kind of be an audio diary of Shannon Kringen, I guess. I just called that Homeland Security number to say no to Steve Bannon, pretty much knowing that they're just going to put him in anyway. Uh, sadly, I don't think the United States of America is a democracy anymore. I'm not sure actually when it really was a democracy. I think it used to be a semi-democracy, and now it's even further from being a democracy than ever before with the current administration in place. I called to complain about Betsy DeVos. I don't know if that's how you say her name. I called to complain about Steve Bannon. I think I called about something else too. I've called a few different numbers and actually gotten through and left voicemails for senators and congresspeople. I don't really think it's going to do any good. I think that my message was, please no to this person and here's why I don't like this person and I want somebody better. And then I said, but I know this isn't really a democracy and people are probably paid off to vote for these people. People are paid. People are motivated They want to keep their jobs, and they want money and power. Um, So they just go along with the absurdity of what's happening. I guess it's a backlash that people who didn't like Obama, so now it's like a backlash. I have to say that I love my affordable health care, and I liked Obama as a human being. I think Obama and his wife seemed like decent, real human beings that actually cared about the poor, the middle class, the environment, um, you know, people's health and international diplomacy, etc. But some of the things that Obama did while in office economically, financially with Wall Street and with prison and war is not really something I'm all that thrilled about. It seemed similar to Bush, similar to the more conservative presidents. But I have to say that when Obama spoke, he was a lot more intelligent and articulate than the current person we have in office, Donald Trump, which is totally bizarre that he's even there. He seems more like a showbiz Hollywood casino con man, snake oil salesman kind of guy than, um, yeah, the corruption, let's just say, is now very transparent. The emperor has no clothes. We see things very clearly now about how corrupt things are when we have an entrepreneur as the president, and, and in fact, a bad entrepreneur who rips people off and likes to have lawsuits against him and likes to tell people, go ahead and try to sue me, you'll probably lose, and is proud of that. It's so strange that he's our president. That is really kind of bizarre and um, like a dark comedy. And the Saturday Night Live skit, uh, Melissa McCarthy doing Spicer, was hauntingly realistic, hauntingly similar to the reality that we find ourselves in. I don't have a television. I just have a a VCR. And I go to friends' houses and watch TV sometimes and uh, watch the skits online of Saturday Night Live, etc. Really, really good material for comedy coming out of the White House right now. They practically writes itself. You don't really have to change much to turn it into a comedy. It kind of is a comedy already. Except it's not a comedy. It's real. Except it's fake, but it's real. So everything is fake and real at the same time. Isn't that strange? But I, I, was, uh, I called basically to say, you know, you're probably going to put Steve Bannon in anyway because this isn't really a democracy and people just do whatever go along, give the green light to all of these fascist people who only care about money and power and not poor people or low income or middle class 
or minorities or gay and bi and transgender people, you know, anyone who's different, handicapped, developmentally disabled, etc. Um, it's very sad that to have such a corporation take over. I mean, I already thought that the United States was USA Incorporated, and now it really is USA Incorporated. I mean, they may as well turn the White House into a casino and put a big gold Trump sign on it and like charge people a thousand dollars to come and take a tour, have their selfie taken with Donald Trump and listen to him fart. So, and then like, you know, be proud of yourself. <laughs> no, this is creepy. I don't, I just, I'm so like un, unproud. I'm so ashamed. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so, I don't know, but I also, think it's dangerous to watch too much of the news especially when we don't know what kind of spin they're throwing on everything but I will say that what I wish was Bernie Sanders I want Bernie Sanders to be the president of the United States and Hillary can be the vice president because she was a little bit too much into banks and war and money although I admire Hillary Clinton's strength for getting as far as she's gotten in her political life because we all know it's a man's world and as a woman in order to make it as far as she's gotten, you have to be very strong and very tough and handle criticism and deal with being, you know, when women, women are pretty much more heavily scrutinized than men. Women seem to, and we're also still paid less than men, which makes me sad and upset. So I do admire Hillary's strength, and I think parts of her care about regular humans, poor and middle class and low income and women's rights and gay rights and I think part of her cares about that and part of her is willing to go along with the military industrial complex because that's kind of what maybe she's had to do that's why I admire Bernie more than Hillary because Bernie Sanders it's amazing to me that he is as successful as he is as a as a person in politics because he hasn't apparently succumbed to the seduction of the money and the power and he continuously says what he really thinks. And he's able to keep his job, which is amazing, because I've been told by people that know more than me about senators, etc., in Congress, that a lot of these senators go along with things and vote for things that they don't necessarily believe in because they're afraid of losing their job and they want to get reelected. So it's sad that people don't vote what they really want. They vote because they feel pressure by lobbyists and by whoever pressures them that they might not get reelected unless they go along with something. Whereas Bernie Sanders seems to have the guts and Elizabeth Warren both seem to have the guts to speak out and say things that make waves that might get them in trouble and yet enough people support them I guess so that they keep getting reelected. I mean I love Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and I want to love Hillary Clinton more than I do. She just doesn't is she's just not progressive enough for me. So I love that she's a female and that she has you know she made it into office as high up as she is, but again, but I I'm disappointed and not very inspired by her. So I will say that I am inspired by Bernie Sanders. I'm inspired by getting money out of politics that, you know, and he mentions Native American rights and environmental rights and solar power and clean up the water, Fukushima, the Dakota pipeline, etc. These things need to be addressed. And the current administration, they seem to not care at all about the environment. They think that planet Earth is here for us to just rape and pillage and use and make money and make profit and, and put people to work, even if it pollutes the environment and toxifies the environment. So instead of going on and on about what I don't like, I think that I would like to talk about what I wish would happen. Uh, I feel like fighting against the powers that be may or may not work. Some people say don't be passive, you got to fight. I do believe it's it's supposedly a democracy and we supposedly have free speech, so it's good to speak up for what you want and try to push for what you want. I think economic power is a good thing to use as well. I think that boycotting certain stores that you don't believe in, not spending money in stores that you don't believe in, only spend money on things that you actually believe in. I think that average American citizens do have the power to choose what they spend money on and what they say no to. You know, if you're unhappy with the news and cable, get rid of your cable. 
your cable the cable company doesn't need your money in fact they actually need your money but the thing is we can punish these companies by not paying them by lowering their profits that is something we can do actively as citizens and by helping people more helping poor and low income people more in your community joining together with family and friends and helping each other out and not and not buying into our system and living a little bit more off the grid like trading and sharing and and trading with each other instead of thinking you have to go and buy things and hire people you can trade people can help each other out people can go to food banks and get food and not buy food at stores all the time or only shop at stores that you really believe in only buy your groceries i love to shop at trader joe's because they carry a lot of non-gmo and a lot of organic products at a good price and i've heard that they pay their workers well i also shop at costco for the same reason they pay their workers well and they have good deals and the ceo of costco is not as greedy as most ceos and he pays um you know he believes in unions and he believes in Costco workers having vacations and benefits and treating them well. So I like to shop at those stores for the good deals they have, Costco and Trader Joe's, but also because I have heard from employees of these corporations that they treat them pretty well. So I like that and I try to avoid shopping at any store that I get a bad vibe from uh if I think they don't pay their workers well and they sell a lot of toxic gmo junk then i prefer to not buy that stuff unless i have to and so i also wish that bernie sanders could be the president of the united states i would like single payer healthcare nonprofit i personally am very very happy with my affordable healthcare obamacare and the affordable healthcare act is the same thing it's it boggles the mind to hear that some people don't realize it's the same thing they think they're two different things because they don't like obama so they don't like the name obamacare obamacare and the affordable health care act are the exact same thing so i love my affordable health care i am one of the lucky people that is low income to the point where mine is free i don't pay i don't have any copay i don't have a monthly fee uh um, i feel very fortunate Ironically, my survival strategy actually is to stay a little bit low income. I mean, I work hard. I work sometimes 7 days a week. I model for a lot of different art classes and for medical students. And I've also delivered groceries off and on for a while now and um I have some good news. I actually qualify for a grant and I might go back to school to study web design. with a grant and uh, I I took graphic design right after high school but this was before computers took over so over the years with family and friends I've learned about photoshop and computers and I I update my own website shanningkringen.com and I've used my graphic design skills uh that I learned actually my whole life cuz my mom is an artist and we had art books in the house and I've always was exposed to good design and I seem to have a natural affinity for color and shape and composition and I did go to alternative um 4th 5th and 6th grade alternative art focused school so I have done um, art my entire life I'm now 48 but uh I never learned officially web design on computers for real in an official classroom setting so I might go to school with a grant and learn web design and then I can improve my website shanningkringen.com I actually do it with front page which is an obsolete web uh web building tool software that I got for free I got a free sample um copy of it and that's why I use it and uh I have a local host here in Seattle called Eskimo. Eskimo.com is my computer website host. They're a small company I like to support and nice people and I'm probably going to stay with them, but I might want to improve my website design. So I'm probably going to go to school. So my point of telling you this is that I'm Shannon Kringen, low income artist. Uh I'm not really proud of being low income, but I'm not ashamed of being low income. I don't think there's anything wrong with being low income and I think that 
thinking that you have to want to be wealthy. I think a lot of Americans think that they have to chase after the American dream and that their goal should be to be wealthy. But my goal isn't to be wealthy. And in fact, unless I become extremely wealthy, I won't be able to really function too well in this culture. Uh, I basically qualified. I was on a waiting list for a few years and I got a Section 8 voucher. So now my rent is, is guaranteed to only be a third of my income. And so I keep... Um, demonstrating and proving what my income is and then my rent is only a third of my income and I wish everybody could have rent that was only that much because I know people whose rent is just skyrocketing way high and their income is not you know rising at the same level so it's getting more and more and more expensive just to pay your rent you know and then you're forced to go to food banks to get food because if you don't have money left over to get food then that's what you have to do I will say that personally, I'm in a good position. I'm low income, so I'm certainly not wealthy at all. Um, and I do go to the food banks to supplement my income. And my mom actually needs a little help. So I'm helping her out by getting her some food bank food and sharing with her. But I will say that I qualify for a grant to go back to school. I have my rent is now only a third of my income guaranteed. I have a very nice landlord. Um... I live not too far away from downtown Seattle, so I can easily commute everywhere. I have a fuel-efficient used car that I drive around to my gigs. So basically, the Trump administration so far has not directly screwed up my life other than stressing me out to read all the news headlines and listen to what they say that I don't agree with and I'm afraid of. That stressed me out, but my financial life is still doing fine. I am very frugal and smart with money, and I'm low income, but I know how to live as cheap as I possibly can. Shop in thrift stores, go to the food bank. Uh, I qualify for some benefits, so I'm able to go grocery shopping now um, and on my budget, and I am so grateful and I have all these modeling jobs. And I recently had, I work at like, my income taxes are rather confusing. I work at like 15 or 20 different places, literally. So I have some 1099s and some W-2s or W-4s or whatever they're called, you know, the regular tax uh, stuff, but all that jazz. But uh, I usually always owe money when I pay taxes because of my 1099 income where they don't take any taxes out. Then I have to pay taxes on that at the end of the year. But I can usually always afford to do that because I am so careful. So I basically am very proud of myself for doing as well as I am. I'm living by myself with my cat and I am continuing to feed him raw frozen meat food, special food I get at the health food pet store, special well-balanced lamb, chicken, venison, beef, sardines. I'm going to try rabbit next. And he's really happy. His health has improved tremendously. His digestive system. I was recently interviewed by a market research person and even paid a little bit for my time uh, for uh, talking about my experience with feeding my cat raw meat diet food and how much his health has improved and how it's really not that much more expensive when you factor in that I don't have to take him to the vet hardly ever now and that he doesn't waste any of his food and I keep all of his food frozen because it's raw meat so it has to stay frozen and so I only feed him a little bit at a time so basically there's no waste the previous food I was feeding him he was wasting half of it so I'm really happy that my cat really loves his raw food diet to the point where he licks his bowl like it's ice cream or something, like a little kid licking an ice cream bowl, and he's very happy, and his fur is so shiny, and his digestive system is better, and the vet thought he might be diabetic, and now it's looking like he's not diabetic at all, so his health is improving. I'm also feeding him diatomaceous earth, a little bit of powder in his food every morning to cleanse his body and give him minerals. I'm also eating diatomaceous earth, about a teaspoon every day in water on an empty stomach. It has silica in it and lots of other minerals. It cleanses your body. It cleanses your digestive system. It's supposed to help take toxic metals out of your body. Um, Diatomaceous earth, food grade, look that up. It's, you have to make sure to get the food kind though. That's the 100% food grade. So I very carefully did research before I got this. So be very careful. If you, if you try diatomaceous earth, make sure you get the right kind. Otherwise it's 
it's not safe to eat. So that's my advice on that. And if you feed your cat raw meat diet, do research on that. There's a lady online named Dr. Karen Becker, who is a naturopathic vet, and she has a lot of good information about how to safely feed your dog or cat raw meat diet. There's only some vets who know much about it. Um, some vets caution against it because if you just feed your pet food scraps from your food, they're not going to be uh, nourished. And if you give them cooked food, it doesn't have the, the raw enzymes in it. So they're not really going to get that much nutrition from just a hunk of cooked meat. So basically dogs and cats, what they need is organ meats. They need like all the pet food I, I feed my cat is like ground up liver and heart and like it's not just the chicken meat that we would eat. It's raw chicken mixed with liver and heart and necks and bones. And the same with the lamb. I feed him lots of different kinds of meat to keep the variety, to get him as much diversity of nutrition as possible. I guess I'm just really into nutrition. I think nutrition is my hobby because I also went wheat free and gluten free three years ago or maybe three and a half years ago, I guess. And, uh, I lost 30 pounds and my thyroid became normal because it was underactive and now it's normal. And my moods, I still have mood swings and mental health concerns, but uh, my moods are much, I'm much less grumpy and I'm more stable and even keeled and much happier. And so stopping all wheat from my diet, I don't eat any bread. I don't eat um, gluten-free bread. I just don't eat any bread at all. And I don't eat much grain. I don't really eat much rice either. I eat potatoes. I eat fruits and vegetables and meat and beans and nuts and seeds. And I drink a lot of water. I get my water at the Artesian Well in Linwood near Seattle. It's free and it's amazing water with no chlorine and no fluoride. I wish Bernie Sanders was the president of the United States. You know, if I was president of the United States, I would invest in solar power and mass transit uh, I'm, I'm more into uh, socialized democracy, you know, democratic socialism, meaning mixed with capitalism, uh, meaning meaning I believe in the government funding social services, Medicare, single payer health care for all, mass transit roads. I believe in tax money being collected for the public library that we all use, the the public roads, the mass transit, public parks, all of the public things that all of the humans use, whether they're rich or poor, young or old, sick or healthy. We all use the library from time to time. We drive on the roads. We all need health care and medical treatment, mass transit, power, electricity. Uh, I would put money into cleaning up the water in Michigan and wherever else, I guess, and there's many different states in the United States that have old pipes and bad water to the point where toxic things are leaking into the water, whether it's from pollution or just metal in the old pipes that's, that's leaching. So I would put a lot of money, you know, instead of all the money going to war and Wall Street bailouts and the military war budget and weapons, etc., I would want more money put into the infrastructure of fixing and cleaning up the water. And I would want more attention put on Fukushima and what can Japan and all countries join together and help clean up Fukushima. I mean, I don't know how they're going to clean Fukushima up. Maybe we don't even have the technology to do that, but maybe we should be figuring that out. Maybe mushrooms can help. There's this mushroom guy Mushrooms can do amazing things. Mushrooms can actually clean up toxins from the environment. And I know when Mount St. Helens blew um, and the ecosystem was destroyed near Mount St. Helens, the volcano, in 1980 or whatever year that was, scientists thought that it would take a long time for the ecosystem to come back. And I know that they discovered that mushrooms, that fungus, they saw this fuzzy stuff on the ground and they thought it was spider webs and then they realized it was the facillin, I don't I forgot what you call it, I'm sorry, the, the network, the mitochondria network of, what is it called? You know, the big mushroom uh, fungus. Basically, fungus is the largest living organism on planet Earth. And the scientists discovered 
that fungus was the first thing that came back to the Mount St. Helens area. And then because of the fungus, they had little birds and little weeds start to grow. And then little birds came and ate the weeds and then the birds pooped and then the poop made more plants grow. And so basically the ecosystem started again, except it's a different ecosystem. So it's almost like it was the feng shui, the natural feng shui of planet Earth. When Mount St. Helens blew, the ecosystem was destroyed and then reborn again. And I took a, a, a class from this lady who was an expert on ecology and the forests and a lot of geographical scientific type stuff. And she told us that uh, the ecosystem came back to Mount St. Helens really fast. Like within six months, it started coming back. And they thought it would take a year to a year and a half. And six months, it started growing back. And different plants started growing because of the fungus and the birds and the weeds and all of the animal poop uh, that was fertilizer for the ground that made the plants grow. And then because of whatever plants were growing, certain birds and other um, rabbits and deer and raccoons and coyotes and whatever animals live around there, all the different little rodents and bigger animals started coming in and eating and grazing and then pooping. And then because of that, all of these other plants started growing and then trees started growing and seeds blowing in the air. And I mean, it's kind of amazing. That kind of gives me hope, actually. And I know that in Chernobyl, where they had the nuclear um, disaster a long time ago, there's there's birds and plants that live there. I think humans still don't live there, but there's birds and plants that live there. And we as humans didn't even think that was possible. So it could be that Fukushima, <coughs> excuse me, it could be that Fukushima could be cleaned up with mushrooms, you know, fungus, um, different microorganisms that are like filters and clean toxins. I don't know if there's some way. So if I was president of the United States, I would want to look into that and definitely get into some international diplomacy with other countries and not want to start conflict with other countries and boss other countries around and act like a dictator. I mean, if making America great again means that you act really macho, like a macho cowboy with lots of money, and you boss other countries around and show them, you know, hey, we're America, we're number one, like, this is like a football team or something. I think that sounds like a very bad idea to be not to not be di diplomatic. Plus, if the US dollar ever becomes not the main currency, we're in trouble. I wonder if that will happen. Who knows what will happen? I'm just kind of making this up as I go. But I will say that President uh, Trump has not directly ruined my life. Uh, I'm concerned and I'm afraid of what will happen, but my health care supposedly is guaranteed. My affordable health care is guaranteed through the end of 2017, I think till January of 2018 or something like that a year from now. So we'll see what happens with that. And my Section 8 housing voucher is still good and um, hopefully that will continue. So I don't know what's going to happen with all this stuff. And uh, I don't know, but... I would, if I was president of the United States, of course, I would put more money. I would tax the rich. I would make the wealthy people pay their fair share of taxes. I would put a ceiling on the income of the high income people. I would want the raise, the, the federal minimum wage, I would want raised to like as high as I could get it. I don't know what they could do it. It's only seven fifty an hour right now or something crazy. I made seven twenty five an hour in 1994. That was 23 years ago here in Seattle at a uh, minimum wage job that I was working. So that's sad to me that our federal minimum wage, I mean, the, the price of food and gas and rent has skyrocketed over the last 25 years. And it's hard to imagine that some people actually are only paid seven fifty an hour and that that's legal. That's just horrible. I think federal minimum wage should be 10 or 15, actually maybe $15 an hour to keep up with inflation of the price of food and gas and rent, etc. Maybe some states are different. I don't know. I know in Seattle, it's pretty expensive. And I think we have the highest minimum wage. I think we actually do have $15 minimum wage here in Seattle, which is interesting because I'm an art model. 
and my base pay is $15 an hour, and it's been that way for years. So I almost feel like if our minimum wage is up to 15 now, figure models should be getting a raise as well. But I do make a living as a, as a model for artists, and uh, I work at several different places, and classes are like three or four hours at a time. So I make anywhere from $45 for a three-hour class to $60 to $75. I think the highest paying art school pays about $84 for three hours of modeling, but I pay taxes on some of that. Some of the schools uh, pay taxes for me and some of them I have to pay taxes on. So basically I am low income, even though my wage as a model is sometimes fairly high compared to minimum wage. Some of the medical schools pay $30 an hour, it depends but I pay taxes on all of that because there's no taxes taken out of those checks. And so basically I am a low income person, but I feel like my health care would not be affordable if I made more money. If I was more middle class, then my health care would not be affordable and my rent would not be affordable. So I like it the way it is for me right now and my benefits that I receive. So, and again, I work hard. I'm not lazy. I think there's a stereotype that, that people that, that get, um, uh, social service help are lazy and just sit around and don't work. But I work all the time. I work pretty much every day sometimes and to the point where now I don't have to work as much because I would like to take some time off because I sometimes am so exhausted that when I come home from work, I just crash and I want to, to be able to enjoy my life more and occasionally get a massage and occasionally take a trip and visit friends in Europe that have invited me to stay with them and so I know how to tr how to find a good deal on airline tickets and then go to Europe and rest and relax and stay with friends and just buy grocery store food and drink water and live really cheap that's my <laughs> that's my European vacation is is to do it the really cheap way so don't have to spend tons of money Europe is pretty expensive but you don't have to spend tons of money I've done I've been to Europe like eight or nine times over the last 20 years and Every time I always spend less, I always spend even less money than I think that I'm going to spend. I'm so good at budgeting myself. Although I suffer sometimes, I I don't really let myself have much fun. I don't know. I'm kind of afraid of spending money, so I'm really careful. So there's me. So, and what else? If I was president of the United States, I would definitely make corporations pay their fair share of taxes. I think that if churches are going to get political, they may as well pay taxes too. But I don't know. I'm not a religious person. I'm not really a church person. So I am more of a spiritual person. I went to a temple in Santa Barbara. I visited relatives recently in Santa Barbara twice. And I went to the Vedanta Temple in Santa Barbara. What an amazingly beautiful place. And I did some meditation and I went to a Vespers service, which is called something about the lights. It's a beautiful Hindu um they sing in Sanskrit, and it's a beautiful kind of ceremony. But I mostly went there for the um, quiet, silent meditation and the amazing view of the ocean, of the Pacific Ocean, from the Vedanta Society in Santa Barbara, way up on the top of a hill. I forgot the name, like Hidden Valley Ranch Road. <laughs> and that's a salad dressing. Hidden Valley Ranch salad dressing. Hidden Valley Ranch. Yeah, I remember that. That. Um, that salad dressing commercial from the 80s, Hidden Valley Ranch. It's Hidden Valley Ranch salad dressing. You know, <laughs> I'm joking now. Okay, so I went to Santa Barbara and I visited relatives and I rented a car. Can you believe I found an amazing deal, $10 a day uh, through Enterprise Car Rental. I found a $10 a day weekend special. So from Friday to Monday, I rented a car and it was only $34 for the whole thing. Plus gas, I spent, I think, $12 on gas. So $34, $44, $46. I rented a car for three days in Santa Barbara and drove myself around uh, to my relatives' houses and as well as to the ocean. And I really had a good time watching surfers at the ocean. I took photographs of myself underwater. I went to the Los Banos community pool in Santa Barbara near the ocean and photographed myself with my waterproof camera. It was wonderful. What else did I do? And I visited my great aunt who is 89 years old and her health is starting to fade. She has COPD 
and needs oxygen tank with her at all times. And so I don't know how much longer she'll be on the planet. So I wanted to see her and make the best of being with her. And she told me a story of her husband who passed away many years ago. Um, my great uncle and her, my great aunt, they um, had an art gallery in Solvang and Palm Springs, California, and they promoted jazz musicians. And my my um, grandfather and his brother both promoted jazz musicians, I think in the 40s or the 30s, or I don't even know what decade that was, but Frank Sinatra, when he was only 18, was at one of my grandfather's parties that he threw in Huntington Beach. And my grandmother got to dance with Frank Sinatra. And my great aunt told me a story of driving Billie Holiday to the airport. So my, my which is interesting because they were helping promote her and helping her get to a to a gig um, and apparently she never went to that gig because she talked the pilot into flying somewhere else t- so she could get drugs so she had a, a serious drug issue I think Billie Holiday but I don't really know the full scoop on that but apparently Billie Holiday my aunt told me had a little dog that was with her all the time and his toenails were painted red or her toenails were painted red the dog's toenails were painted red hopefully that didn't hurt the dog the chemicals in the in the nail polish might not be good for a dog but um probably looked really cute so that's an interesting little tidbit and then the comedian Jonathan Winters my dad actually met him and had lunch with him and drove him somewhere so basically my on my dad's side of the family we have Southern California people that were involved in showbiz a little bit in terms of promoting uh, jazz musicians and my dad once modeled and had did a photo shoot with a famous photographer in Hollywood named Peter Gowland who did these beautiful photos of my dad when he was like a teenager but my dad said he felt like a dork so he didn't pursue modeling but he's my dad is a tall a uh, very fit athletic man and so and he still is 71 and he's still fit and trim like a professional athlete he, he practically is he used to be a tennis teacher almost went pro so my dad's very athletic so that's a kind of my dad's side of the family and my mom's side of the family we have lots of artistic people and introverted um, teachers and different people I don't really know the mom, my mom's side of the family as much as my dad's side a little bit right now but Um, I'm an only child of parents who divorced when I was four, um, but I see both my parents a lot, and uh, my mom lives in the country, my dad lives here in the city, so there's some of my little family uh, tidbit there, so wow, this is Shannon Kringen, you're listening to Goddess Kring Radio Podcast, it is now February 9th, 2017, and I'm taking care of my dad's cat while he is in Florida on a trip, a fun trip. I'm probably going to get a massage later, and I'm trying to learn to be nicer to myself. I tend to push myself really hard. Oh, the library. This is what I was going to share with you. Something really good happened with my music in the library. The Seattle Public Library is going to feature Synchronicity, which is uh, musical tracks by me and I collaborated with a man named Claxton Kent, who is in Portland. And he did a public access show called Von Hummer. And his name is Claxton Kent. And also Von Hummer. If you Google Von Hummer, V-O-N-H-U-M-M-E-R, the Von Hummer show, or Claxton Kent, you can listen to YouTube videos of his his, uh, songs that he writes and records. He's like a one-man band. He's very talented, very unique guy. And I worked with him. I performed with him live in Seattle at Chop Suey and Cafe Racer, I think. I hope I'm saying the right names. I know we were at Cafe Racer. Were we at Chop Suey? We opened for Space Lady. Pretty sure that's the place. Sometimes I say the wrong name of venues, but I think it's Chop Suey. But basically, the Seattle Public Library is going to have Synchronicity, Claxton Kent and Goddess Kring music on file there's a thing called playback so if you go to seattle public library and enter playback i think it's spl.org slash playback uh sometime soon you will have goddess kring music goddess kring slash claxton kent music available there's six tracks that claxton kent and i made he did the music and i did the vocals and the lyrics and we recorded in his home studio in Portland. He has this really cool recording studio 
in his backyard that's a soundproof little room. It's just an amazing, cute little recording studio. I love it. And he has really good microphones and equipment, beautiful stuff. And we recorded, I think, five or six tracks that I wrote the lyrics to, and he did the music for, and I did the vocals. And we recorded them, and it was really fun. And then I think I put six solo Goddess Crane tracks. So there's six Claxton Kent Goddess Crane tracks and six solo Shannon Kringen Goddess Crane tracks of my experimental music and poetry and spoken word. And they're giving me a small honorarium. So I'm really, really grateful and happy that I'm part of the Seattle Public Library database of local music and audio, along with Claxton Kent from Portland. So check that out if you want. If you go to shannonkringen.com, or go to my Facebook or my Twitter or my Instagram. Um, I'm on Live Journal and Google Plus. I'm basically all over the internet. So if you just Google Shannon Kringen or Goddess Kring, you can find my website and my various links. And I'm always sharing about what I'm doing, like photos. I took all these really cool photos underwater in Santa Barbara with my waterproof camera in the pool and opened my eyes underwater and took sort of glamour shots of my, you know, facial portraits, really kind of cool animated shots of myself underwater. I also took really beautiful photos of people on the beach running with their dogs and beautiful eucalyptus trees. And what are those trees with the white fuzzy trunks, like birch bark trees and cypress trees. I'm not even sure the names of trees. One of my favorite things about Southern California are the trees. I mean, I love the trees in Washington, Seattle. We have beautiful pine trees and madrona trees, and we even have eucalyptus trees here too. But in Santa Barbara and San Diego, where I'm from, there's all these beautiful eucalyptus trees and willow trees and birch trees and succulents and palm trees and cactus and I really love the flowers and plants in Santa Barbara and I took pictures of you know plants flowers trees the ocean people surfing with their dogs people playing with their dogs on the beach tropical birds um, just beautiful landscapes of the California light at dusk had a lot of fun in Santa Barbara by myself I mean I visited relatives but I mostly just drove around by myself and hung out at the beach and just did sort of an an introverted holiday and visited my dad's cousin and his wife and their dogs and my um, my great aunt. So this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I guess this is my audio diary for February 9th, 2017. I am feeling very grateful and despite all the political horribleness happening, I I call to say no to Steve Bannon, knowing that they're just going to put him in anyway. They're probably going to let Trump put in all the people that he wants in. For whatever reason, the powers that be, the Senate, the Congress, the whoever decides these things, the committee, are they paid off to do this? Or they're afraid of losing their job, so they're just going along. I mean, that's scary. If somebody's afraid of losing their job and they just go along with the president, that means he's a dictator. Anybody who doesn't agree with him gets fired. So I think it's time we need to fire him. You're fired, Donald Trump. You are fired. Donald Trump, you are fired. You're done. I wish. But who knows what's going to happen. I don't know if he's going to get impeached or if they're going to invoke the 25th Amendment and get him fired. I don't know who the powers that be are that can decide to get rid of him. But then we would have Pence take over, correct? Which would be even worse? Or would that be better? Aren't they both pretty bad? Although Trump is worse because he's really, really, really arrogant and really kind of a sociopath type of a guy, meaning he doesn't really care about anyone's feelings except his own. And he seems quite insecure. He doesn't like being criticized. He freaks out when he's criticized. I absolutely love the Saturday Night Live sketch with Melissa McCarthy being Spicer. I thought she was as good as John Belushi. I mean, she is so talented with her voice and her eyes and her body. She really got into that character and created like a really strong, you know, comedy moment. So I loved that. What else? I'm going to drink some coffee and tea and I'll be right back. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring podcast. Oh yeah. I was thinking maybe instead of just doing monologues, I would interview somebody. Does anybody out there want to be interviewed? Maybe I'll talk to my family and friends and see if any of them want me to interview them or they can interview me 
or I can have a dialogue. I, ha I do have one good friend of mine who says he might want to come on my show and do some kind of interesting dialogue. I've done some music with him in the past. He's a good friend of mine, kind of like a brother to me. Thanks for listening. Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, podcast number 17. Can you believe it's been 17 weeks? Thanks for being here with me. My name is Shannon Kringen, and you are watching Goddess Kring. The reason I call myself Goddess Kring is because some think that it's an egotistical, narcissistic thing, like worship me, I'm a goddess, look at me, put me up on a pedestal. But that's actually not, 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 not what I'm trying to communicate when I say Goddess Kring. I think I should actually spell it Goddess, like G-O-D-U-S, God, us, us, God, me, myself, and I, God, you, God, God, us, is like tapping into the sacred within me and honoring that. And some spiritual people or religious people um, seem to think that if you call yourself a god or goddess, that it's an arrogant thing or that it's um, minimizing um, the power of God or you know whatever you want to call science or spiritual uh, creative energy that creates the universe and mother nature and the ecosystem. See, to me, that's what God is. God is science. God and science are exactly the same thing to me. Evolution uh, and the ecosystem and God and spirituality is all the same to me. Uh, so whatever science and spirituality agree upon is truth to me and anything else is just superstition or something we don't really know you know so whatever is true about god is also true about science that's that's my own personal feeling and it's, it's similar to science of mind um philosophies which i mostly agree with and so i call myself goddess kring because my name is kringen and kring is a nickname a short version of kringen kring kringen and so goddess is like um religious people sometimes think that it's arrogant to call yourself a god or goddess or think of yourself as amazing as God. But I think that that makes us um, rise to a higher standard, which is a good thing. So if we think of ourselves as sacred beings, God or goddess, then it's like we, we, we owe it to ourselves and to the world to act in a high manner, to act in a positive life-affirming manner uh, that doesn't harm life and affirms life and beauty and the sacredness of the plants and the animals and the planet Earth and the ecosystem. And if we think of ourselves in that way, instead of it being an arrogant thing, it is a humble thing. It's actually a, you know, you feel um, like you're, you're supposed to take care of the Earth and take care of other people and love people and have compassion. And to me, that is like what being a goddess is, is to think about how connected I am as a human being to plants, animals, other human beings, other countries, other cultures, music music, art, dance, theater, science, um, all of the things in the world, different cultures and how we all get along or how we all fight. Um, so to me, if more people thought of themselves as gods or goddesses, it would lessen the violence in the world. Because if you see yourself to me as being spiritual, is that you feel connected to the atmosphere around you, the plants, the animals, the other human beings. Therefore, if you go around hurting other people, you're really hurting yourself. And if you go around loving yourself and loving others, it, you know, it all comes back. So if I love another person, it, it helps me love myself more. And if I love myself, it helps me love other people. And then if I hate myself, that helps me create more conflict with others. And if I hate other people or plants or animals, that helps more hatred come. So to me, being spiritual and being a god or goddess is about seeing that you're connected to that which is beyond yourself. Therefore, you owe it to yourself. It's in your own best self-interest, actually, to take good care of other people because it helps the self. So that's why I call myself Goddess Kring, because I actually think that deep down within each human being is a sacred god or goddess. That's how I see it. Okay, so I just thought I would throw that in. That's my little goddess uh, philosophy of why I call myself Goddess Kring. It's like a nickname that I gave myself, and it's almost like Shannon is the is the little woman behind the curtain and Goddess Kring is like the Wizard of Oz. You know, maybe I'm also trying to build myself up because I feel insecure sometimes and I want to build myself up and amplify myself. I will say too, I wanted to add that I am so grateful that I live by myself in my own apartment with my kitty, Kisun. And I have a boyfriend for the last over two years now. I've been dating this man who's a musician and a photographer, and he basically works full time as a freelance person. So we have that in common that we have random unusual schedules, not your typical nine to five or whatever kind of schedule. We have just random schedules. And it's really nice. I've talked about he and I have talked about me moving in with him. Uh, he's a very private person, so I don't want to say a lot about him, but I will say that like he doesn't have an online presence. He's in a, a rock and roll cover band, but he's not, um, he doesn't have like a big online presence aside from his band. And they perform a lot, like almost every weekend at different clubs around town. And they're, um, you know, a working band, a professional working rock band, cover band. And um, I was going to say that I am so grateful and blessed because I'm not exactly the best. He says I'm a good girlfriend to him, but I always think I'm not that great of a girlfriend. And because I like my space and I'm a little bit moody, obviously, <laughs> and I'm really into my artwork and my, you know, taking photos and doing show and tell and all my social media websites and my podcasts like I'm doing right now. And 
he gives me the space because he has lots of other friends and he's a musician and a photographer and he is is more outgoing than I am although I guess I'm sort of an introverted extrovert but I'm sort of introspective more than he is although I share a lot online it's funny it's like he and I are the opposites he has lots of friends and a pretty active social life but he does not have an online presence aside from his band having a website and promoting their gigs and performing live in front of an audience every weekend almost but he doesn't have an online presence. Whereas I am not very socially active. I don't have a lot of friends that I hang out with. I have a lot of online friends that I talk to every day on Facebook and Twitter, etc., Instagram and Flickr and YouTube. And I share my, I basically share, I have a huge online presence. Um, not that I'm bragging about that, but I'm just saying that in some ways I'm a little quiet and a little shy and yet I'm a nude model and I have a big online presence and he does not, and yet he's more social than me. So it's like we're the opposite in a way. And I'm just realizing that it, it. I'm really, he and I have talked about me moving in with him. But I think for now, I just want to keep my own apartment, keep my own space. I have affordable rent. And I guess I'm just feeling really grateful. Uh, I go back and forth, you know, I stay at his house, and then I come back to my place. And he generally doesn't come here. It's just more comfortable at his house. And then my, my apartment is kind of like my own art studio where me and my cat hang out. And it's just my own little Shannon Kringen cave where I stay. So I guess I'm just really grateful that for two and a half years now, I think I've been with him for two and a half years. We were friends for a few months before we started dating. And we're very different in some ways. And yet we seem to be really good friends with each other and we're definitely you know we have a nice romantic attraction that's not going away and that's good it's staying so I'm really grateful about that that it's had a stabilizing effect on me because my love life has been really really rocky uh, maybe because I dated people I wasn't compatible with and I also have mood swings and various issues and maybe I've just um, chose the wrong people but maybe also my problems you know it I just wasn't compatible with these other people and it seems like he and I we don't have a perfect fairy tale romance or anything like that but we don't really fight we don't really argue we definitely disagree on some things and we've had some challenges but we we always seem to work through it and there's sort of a stabilizing effect that he has on me and I'm happy and I think I enrich his life as well hopefully so I just want to say I'm so grateful for that that you know the relationship I have with him is pretty good and again it's not perfect there's no fairy tale thing happening there but it's but it's really nice and we get along and I don't know I guess I'm just realizing I'm really grateful and I keep thinking I'm afraid that if I don't spend enough time with him he'll drop me but the thing is I sometimes just need a lot of time to myself to do my artwork to just be in my own introspective world and to cultivate other friendships. I don't really have a lot of other friends that I hang out with. So I'm trying to figure out, do I want more friends or do I really just like my space? Like, am I avoiding people because I um, am wounded and afraid of trusting other people or don't know how to enjoy other people? Or do I truly just want my space? I think I mostly just want my space. I'm so busy working all the time as a model, doing my podcast. I also volunteer. I know some people are going to criticize me, but I volunteer at Woodland Park Zoo, and I've done that for many years, and I know that there are some negative things about zoos, but I generally like the zoo, and I feel like it helps more than it harms in terms of animals in captivity, in terms of protecting the animals, in terms of helping them breed, trying to help them, so I don't want to defend that, but I'll just say that I believe in what I do there and doing these kinds of things. I belong to a creative writing group with Carla and Purple Mark. Hey, Carla and Purple Mark. I don't think you listen to my podcast, but if you do, <laughs> a shout out to my creative writing buddies, Purple Mark. Hey, anybody listening in Seattle know who Purple Mark is? He's the guy, the rainbow, rainbow guy. He's the ambassador of color. He's a very great person and he writes a lot. And Carla Blaschka, she's a creative writing uh, friend of mine and she writes flash fiction, I think, is what it's called, short stories. And uh, we meet usually at a bookstore on every weekend 
in Seattle and we write together and we do creative free writing and we bring prompts. I usually just write from my own chaos in my head, uh, but generally we have prompts and then we write, we do a 20 minute free write. So maybe on this show I can start interviewing other people or have them interview me or do dialogue or I might just keep doing my own solo monologue thingy Mick Jagger here. Thank you for tuning in to Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring and podcast. I'll see you next week. I do one of these every week for an hour, 60 minutes. I'm happy that Seattle Public Library will have the Goddess Kring, Sing Kringnicity album with Claxton Kent on their playback database in the library. That will be, I think, indefinite, ongoing. I signed a contract with them, Creative Commons, perpetual license with the Seattle Public Library. I'm very honored and happy and grateful that the library has a a database of local indie music. If you're a, an independent musician in Seattle, look into that Seattle Public Library playback if you want your music added to their database. I don't know if they're still accepting people Uh, But maybe they are. So check that out. Seattle Public Library playback. And so this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. And uh, it's a really rainy day. And I need to get warm. I've got my window open for my cat. He likes the fresh air. I also thought about trying to do some voice work. Trying to make a, a sample tape of my audio recordings. And try to audition and see if I can get any voice work. A lot of people have said they like my voice. They find it hypnotic or soothing or comforting. I love recording my voice. I think it's really fun and interesting. And it kind of, I find it kind of reassuring and comforting and soothing to record my voice. This makes me feel validated. I feel um, more fully alive and like just something, it, it just kind of reassures me that my existence is meaningful and that I'm happy to be alive and grateful to be here. So thank you for listening. Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I'll see you next week. Um, I also, I add these, these pod, these podcast recordings are on my YouTube channel and I feature as visuals, a slideshow of my photography. So my photo art is, uh, if you go to my YouTube, Shannon Kringen on YouTube, watch a slideshow of my visual art and listen to these podcasts. You can also go to Mixcloud, Bandcamp, and Patreon and hear these for free. And thank you so much, Hollow Earth Radio, for inviting me to do this. Hollow Earth Radio, you're listening. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, and you're listening to Hollow Earth Radio, where this originally airs. And then I also broadcast it onto my YouTube, Patreon, Bandcamp, and Mixcloud websites. So it's amazing what you can do with on your home computer with Audacity, a free uh, audio software program, and a microphone. All you need is a home computer, a good internet connection, a microphone, and Audacity, and record your voice and make a podcast. It's actually not that hard to do these podcasts. And uh, if you have something interesting to say, record your voice doing it and start publishing it. It's free and there's so many websites where you can publish your stuff for free and share it. And I am honored and happy to do this. Grateful. So I'll see you next week and I'm going to think about other topics I can talk about. And I'm going to close it out with some Goddess Kring, Kring Speak poetry. So enjoy and visit my website, shannonkringen.com, to just see what's going on with me and read my blogs and my various art projects. There's a movie called Channeling Yourself, which I hope will be out eventually about public access television, featuring me and a whole bunch of the other interesting public access uh, Seattle TV people. Where Are They Now?, the guy from Deface the Nation, and lots of other different shows, and All You Can Stomach, Vegan TV Show, etc., Hot Tub TV, so many different shows, My Show, Goddess Kring, so many interesting public access TV shows that we had in the past. Here's some Kring Speak poetry. I'll see you next week. ShannonKringen.com, Goddess Kring, podcast number 17. Uh, Tether Tether no more, tether 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 no no more. More, more, names that rhyme rhyme no longer longer on on time, time. drone Drone of machine, machine. comfort Comfort me me to dream, dream. lands Lands of sand, sand. strand Strand. me solid, solid. 
Solar twinkle, Solar twinkle sprinkle, 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 fertile, fertile gumby, gumby smiles, smiles. Gumby, gumby smiles, gumby, gumby smiles. smiles. Thighs tired, tired but tingling, tingling happy. happy. Letting subconscious, Letting subconscious guide, guide the slide, the slide guitar, guitar me. me. Twangy, Twangy spicy, spicy twists twist of lime. Aphid green, opal blue. Rust crackling off the mark. Crispy rocks. Mark the Mark groove, groove. interlude. The inter- Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.